G'day everyone, it's the beginning of the new year 2020 and I thought today would be the perfect opportunity to give you a carnivorous plants nursery update. I can't wait to share with you how my Venus's flytraps and North American pitcher plants are going right now. I'm also excited to share with you some exciting new varieties of plants that I've just recently ordered. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more quality carnivorous plants videos. Don't forget to click the bell icon to receive notifications of my new videos. Okay, so this is a view of my carnivorous plants up here. We're well and truly into summer. It's the third day of 2020. We're Conditions have been very, very hot lately. A couple of days ago, we had a day that reached up to 46 degrees Celsius. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how hot it was. I'd never sort of experienced a day that hot. As you can imagine, I was quite anxious because my plants are grown outdoors all year round. The risk that you take when you grow them out, outdoors is that they're exposed to the elements and that, of course, that includes heat as well. But I'm glad to say that the plants have exceeded my expectations and I'm very happy to say that they came out relatively unscathed. I can't see any signs of burn around the edges of the pitchers. The only ones that I have seen a bit brown around the edges are the older pitchers which have, were formed in early spring. That's quite normal as the pitchers brown off and get older. Of course they do get replaced with the newer pitchers. So this one here is a Saracenia flava, the variety is called Rupacopora. The pitchers being produced now are not as large or as wide as the one produced in spring, but they're just as beautiful and just as colourful. In fact, they're even more colourful than the ones produced in spring. And I think it's got something to do with the fact that their diets uh, increase with insects as the season progresses. These ones here are actually taller than the ones produced in spring. And I'm seeing that in other varieties as well. This one here is a Saracenia flava variety called Ruglii. These are the older pitchers and these are the beautiful pitchers that are being produced now. They're not as big as I said and they're quite a little bit taller than the ones, than the spring pitchers. Absolutely beautiful. Here's another one here opening up. Now, as well as the hot days, as you may have heard, we have had our fair share of fires here. From the radio I just heard now, we've got about 180 fires burning here in New South Wales. The air quality has been absolutely shocking at times, to the point where there's been ash in the air. And my pictures here are living proof of just how bad the air quality has gotten. And look at this one over here, this is all full of ash. You get spiders in here building their webs and a lot of that ash has fallen into that web. So yeah, that just shows you just how much ash has been in the air. And you can see here how it's sort of fallen around the edges of these pitches. Despite the ash and despite the heat, I'm still seeing a lot of insects around these pitches. And I'm also seeing a lot of them falling into the pitchers, which is always nice to see being a carnivorous plants gardener. Now, as I said, I can't see any burns around the edges of the pitchers, but what I have noticed is some of them have actually fallen over a bit. Like this one over here. That's a Saracenia flava, uh, sorry, sorry, a Saracenia lacophila, Tarnock variety. I have noticed some plants where the pitchers have fallen over as a result of the extreme heat that we had a couple of days ago, and I've seen it over here as well. You can see this one over here has fallen over. It's sort of coincided with the heat, so I'm pretty sure it's a result of that heat. What I do in this situation, I just simply get that pitcher and I try and prop it up against another picture like this and it sort of it looks a lot nicer not only that i look at these pictures as 
the mouth and stomach of the plant. If you have one more picture standing up, like I have done here, then that means that there's going to be more insects caught into that picture and it's going to digest, providing vital nutrients to the plant. So yeah, if you see them falling over like that, just sort of prop them up by putting them next to some upright pictures. I have seen a few broken ones here. That's because it does get a bit windy over here and especially this side of my uh, collection over here, it does get very windy and with ones that are broken like this, I just tend to, uh, where is it? I just tend to sort of uh, prune them off. You can see another one over here. But that's only a slight, uh, slight mishap. I've got another one over here as well. I'm gonna to have to provide a little bit more wind protection here, but overall, I am very, very happy with those plants. They have surprised me as just to how resilient they are in this uh, in the hot weather. What's really important is that you keep the plants well watered. You gotta make sure that there's plenty of water in the water trays or boxes, depending on what you have. Here you can see I've got styrofoam, polystyrene boxes. They, the polystyrene does a great job of keeping the water nice and cool. So if you can keep that water as, as cool as possible and at a more or less constant temperature, your plants will be happy and as you can see here they will flourish despite the really hot days okay so moving along here I'm just going to show you these Venus's fly traps this is a G16 times G14 it's growing nicely now this one over here is another G16 times G14 what I find unusual about this plant is that it started off with these large traps at the beginning of spring and now they've dived off those large traps and instead all these new traps are being produced in the middle. I don't know why the plant did this, there's another one that did the same thing. So if anyone out there has experienced this please leave a comment. Maybe if you have an explanation leave a comment as well, it'd be interesting to find out what other growers um, have experienced regarding this uh, this growth pattern. Now look at this one over here. This is a big mouth variety. Really, really, there's there's a lot of uh, shoots there. I think there's about three at the beginning of spring, and look how they grow together. That really does add a beautiful effect. Seeing all these bright red uh, traps opened up. Of course, the red of the trap that means that uh, they're getting plenty of sunlight If you don't give them as much sun they won't turn as red as they are like they are here Another one over here. I, I was expecting some of these to get burnt, but they look all right as well again It's very important that you keep those these plants well watered and try to keep that water as cool as possible to help them survive those really hot days Okay, now this is what I wanted to show you. This is a brand new variety of carnivorous plant. This is a sundew, and this is a, a Drosera. Oh, what is it? Here we go. I should know this. Drosera capensis. That's right. Now, Drosera capensis, as with all sundews, is characterized by having these sticky globules on the leaves. They're very sticky. That, of course, is what attracts the insects, and they eventually get caught onto the leaves. But what's really fascinating about Drosera capensis is that the leaves will fold over the trap prey. That sort of helps to ensnare the prey, and it also helps to digest it as well. So this plant here is very, very interesting indeed, and I can't wait till it gets more established. This plant here I bought, say, about two weeks ago and it really is settling nicely and you can see this leaf over here also uh, circling over trap prey I think I think that might be a, some mosquitoes in there yeah but uh, what a beautiful plant indeed all right so moving along over here oh, I really love the look of these Saracenia lacophila so these are these traps here how white they are on the top they're infused with these green reddish veins 
Now the pictures themselves are nowhere near as wide as the Saracenia flava plants. So this one over here, that's around about four centimeters across. Whereas this Saracenia lacophila tarnock variety it's called, I'd say it's around about a centimeter and a half. They may be narrow, but they are always packed full of insects. Always love to hear the sound of buzzing insects in these pictures. There's one over here coming up nicely. You can see the red veins there infused into this picture over here. Look at that. It's gorgeous. And another one over here. So these spindly pictures, they were produced in spring. You can see them over here as well. There's nothing impressive about them. They're quite small, these pictures that were produced in spring, but as autumn approaches, these pictures will get larger. Some of them will reach around about 65 centimetres high, just as large as the Saracenia flava there in the background. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for autumn to arrive to see these, uh, this Saracenia lacophila tarnock variety really start to peak. They don't look like they've been affected by the heat either. So that's good. Very, very happy about that. So moving along over here, these are all my big mouth varieties. They're going really, really nicely. Look at that. Love the colour, the vibrant colour. Now here's a tip to grow very, very healthy Venus's fly traps. Put them into large pots. Now I used to grow these in say 10 centimeter deep pots. These ones here, they're around about ooh, around about 20 centimeters, about double the size. And they really have flourished. The good thing about deep pots, larger pots, is that they insulate against the heat better and they keep the roots of the plant cooler for longer. And it also helps when you keep the water nice and cool as well. And, you can see here with these plants just how well they're going despite the really hot days that we've been getting. And there's another one expected tomorrow as well. But yeah, absolutely stunning. Okay, moving along here. I'm going to show you just these um, seedlings over here again. Look at the filtered light coming through. As I explained in my last video about these seedlings, I've got these larger... Saracenia flava, Rubicopora varieties are surrounding these smaller pitches. The larger plants provide wind protection and they also provide filtered light. It helps to protect these seedlings during those really hot days. And they look pretty good, they look pretty unscathed. Um, they don't, I can't see really any burn marks on the pitches or the leaves. So, yeah, very, very happy about that. Uh, okay, so moving along over here as well. More Venus's flytraps. Looking good. Yeah, look at these colour formations. You love those deep red traps. Absolutely gorgeous. And moving along over here. Okay, so this is another Venus's flytrap that sort of started growing smaller traps. Now what happened was these larger traps over here were uh, appeared around the start of spring and for for a while it didn't start to grow it didn't start to produce those larger traps and instead it started to produce these smaller ones and they're quite packed together it just goes to show um, so long as you follow the basics of looking after these plants give them good water give them good sunlight give them good peat moss then that will give you the confidence to keep going with these plants even if they don't respond as like you wish they had. So I was patient with this plan and it's rewarded me now with these smaller traps. Okay, it may not be as what I expected, but hey, at least I've kept the plan and it's, and it's alive rather than throwing it out. Now, what you also may see here, oh, actually here it is here, these are nuncunurous leaves. These are called phyllodia. Now these are being produced from some plants no, mainly the Saracenia rubicopora varieties. They start to produce these Philodia. As you can see there, they're flat. 
and they're non carnivorous leaves. They're perfectly normal, it's just the way that they grow, their growth patterns, as you could say. And of course, here's another Lacophila. Look at this one over here. Look how beautifully red those pictures are. Whoops, it's a bit windy there. Let's kind of see if I can sort of stabilize it. There we go. Look how red that picture is. These larger pictures were produced in spring. They also produced Philodia. See there, those non carnivorous leaves, those flat ones. It's perfectly normal. Around about autumn, they're going to start coming up with beautiful pictures. Can't wait to see that. All right, everyone, this is the first carnivorous plants update for my nursery for 2020. Hope your plants are growing well. Hope you're keeping your plants nicely watered. And let's hope we get this much needed rain, not only to water the thirsty plants out there, but to, but to put out a lot of these fires which are burning across the state and other states here in Australia as well. So until next time everyone, happy growing.